So one of the most important things of having a successful install when you're doing a stone countertop kit and an exotic countertop kit is, remember, we're putting those in buckets, right? They're sitting there, we're pouring them out, right? So they're sitting in a bucket longer than we typically would, would recommend. And so what we like to do is what we're doing here. We're cooling down, we're chilling the resin before we start. A few ways you can do this, obviously, you can do what we're doing here, buckets with ice. We don't have any running water in here except outside. The other option is if you can put some cold water in the bucket. I think that's been in there probably 20 minutes. So we're just gonna let that sit in there until we're basically ready to go, right? It's gonna be a little bit thicker now that the resin's cold, but again, you're gonna have maximum working time out of that product. So I'm getting ready to prime again. Reason I'm gonna prime just the faces and just the top a little is because I want a solid brown, right? We're doing brown tones on this counter. Obviously these have brown tones, but we're not doing black in it. And so if there was some spot where maybe you saw through a little and saw a black spot, wouldn't really go with the rest of the counter. So I'm gonna just prime these face a little bit on the top brown. Um, that way we have a solid color on those edges. All right, so for our catch basin, right, we need to make a catch basin to catch the drips from running off of here when we pull the tape and dripping on this lower counter. We just use cardboard, we cut strips of it, and then we're gonna tape it together, and then we'll tape it, seal it up back here, and then everything that drips will just fall into here, and you'll kind of see how we do it. It's not pretty by any means, but man, we do this all the time and it works great. All right, so we got our catch basin, right? She ain't pretty, but she does, does what it's supposed to, right? It's gonna catch all the resin when we pull our tape, keep it from dripping onto this counter. That way we can coat different levels of counters over overhanging different counters. Um, and then we got our holes taped up, right? So next thing we need to do is run two rows of painter's tape around all of our edges. And this is basically what creates the dam what lets the resin set up. That way it's nice and thick and it doesn't just run off the counter. And I like to do about half and half. So about half onto the counter, half above it. And the primer's been down for about a half an hour. Primer dries quick. It's still tacky, but it'll continue, continue drying underneath this tape while we're doing the coating. We'll pinch our corners in a little bit. Adds a little tension to the tape. Nice little tip from Alex Webb. Mm. 
So for mixing, uh, this kit calls for, this look calls for uh, just two colors of pigments. And so we have our dark uh, milk chocolate and then we have our camel. These are our solid pigments. So those are the two colors we're gonna use. A very simple kit to mix. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix the full three gallon kit. I'm gonna do our 3P2 process. And then I'm gonna split that three gallon kit into a gallon and a half of each, right? So I'll have two gallon and a half batches in a bucket. And then I have two 1.5 gallon pigments. And so one of these pigments will go into each 1.5 gallon bucket. And then those are our two colors we're gonna use. And then I'm gonna, to make it more manageable, for Alex, I'm gonna pour, fill these up, maybe about a gallon, a little less, right? Have him dump it out. When he dumps these out, I'll fill them up again out of that bucket. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dump two, both part A's into a five gallon bucket. Let those all drain out. And again, when you cool the resin down, it's gonna make it thicker, right? Because it's cold. So I'll let that drain for 15, 20 seconds. And then we're gonna tilt this bad boy up and we'll get you, we'll show you where, how the resin will kind of get built up in the handles. All right, so now we're gonna add our hardener. All right, so most thorough mixing process ever created was our 3P2 process. What it stands for is I'm gonna start the paddle at the top of the bucket, spin it. As I go down, I'll spin it faster and faster. And once I hit the bottom, go around once or twice, come back up slow, spinning it fast. When I get close to the top, I'll slow it down. And then I'll go around once or twice. That stands for one. We're gonna do that three times. Then the letter P stands for pour into the secondary mixing container, which I have here. And then we're gonna go up and down two more times. And then that stands for 3P2. It's gonna thoroughly mix the resin. Um, and then we know for sure we don't have any unmixed resin on the sides, right? We can use everything out of this container, dump it upside down, doesn't matter. Resins, all the resin is gonna set up. So I highly recommend doing this process. All right, so we're ready now. We wanna obviously get this dumped out as fast as we can. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour each color into a five quart. That way we can manage it easier. I'll kind of talk through the process of what we're doing to get this look. While we're doing that, Trey's gonna set up everything to mix another three gallon kit. We're gonna mix it the exact same way. Again, we're doing two different projects here, two different videos. Got the kitchen, got all the bathrooms. And so um, we just wanna continuously, right, be moving. All right, now we got more manageable buckets to pour. So what we're gonna do first, <laughs> pour a bead, get this coated underneath there before we get all this. But the whole uh, point of this process and this design or look, it should just pour beads out, right? Of each different color randomly all across the counter. We pour beads out separated by, you know, a couple inches, cause that's gonna level out a little. And then after we get a decent amount poured throughout the kit, uh, kitchen. We go back and we pour in between each bead. And that's kind of the process of this, right? You never want to pour, like we wouldn't want to use, you know, two gallons on this section and then just a gallon on the rest, right? We ca you'll constantly see us be jumping around pouring these beads out. This is basically what it looks like. And again, a little bit, a little bit harder to pour back here. So I'm gonna pour one and then we're gonna push this back there with the squeegee.
adding a little bit into the opposite colors. And Alex is doing the same exact thing. All right, so check it out. We're pretty much burned right through that three gallon kit quick, right? That's kind of what you want to do. You want to dump them in the bucket, get them dumped out right away. Obviously you can do any pattern design you want. They just want that straight wood grain look. And so yeah, Trey's mixing up that other kit. We're gonna add a little bit more out here and then we're gonna start blending, running our hands, maybe some squeegees across it. We just wanna blend this in so it doesn't look like these random beads that were just poured out, right? We wanna make it look more natural. There's basically only two ways to screw up a project like this. You buy the wrong product, right? Or you don't mix your resin correctly. That's it. It's that simple. Tell them, Alex. I ain't getting no marks in it from the women. <laughs> I wish you would have kept going with that. So blending, obviously we wanna keep this pattern, right? This vein pattern. So when we blend it, we're just gonna run our fingers, kinda of separate them out a little bit, right? And we're just gonna run them straight back and forth and just obviously blend it as much as we want, right? The more you blend it, the more modeling, the more like fracture veins you're gonna get. Biggest thing is just separation in your fingers and then running it with the vein, right? See how it's just pulling and dragging different colors throughout it. Beautiful, just beautiful. It's all about having your fingers separated a little bit. If you, if you have them too close, if you have them too close together, it's gonna to wanna to just push all the product to one side. Opening up those fingers allows it to flow in between your fingers. And that's how we get that natural wood grain look. Pretty much it, pretty cool process. So now we got that cool wood grain and they wanted a little sparkle. And so we're gonna mist it. Uh, we're gonna spritz it first, isopropyl alcohol, 91% or higher. And then I'm gonna mist it with isopropyl that's mixed with our liquid diamonds. So no isopropyl here, and then boom, right where I sprayed it, creates those cells, just gives it a really cool look. So we're gonna let that evaporate for about five minutes, and then we're gonna again mist it, isopropyl alcohol, but we added our liquid diamond uh, pigment, our powder, metallic liquid diamond powder, and it'll add some sparkle to the top, depending on what angle you look at it. It's a pretty cool process. All right, so now we're gonna add the sparkle, right? Our liquid diamonds mixed with isopropyl alcohol. And like if I spray a little on this guy, you can kind of see the sparkle. You picking that up, James? Yeah, I see it really good. 
Yeah, that's I'm cool. seeing it now. Yeah, that's actually So that's kind of what we're doing. So we're just going to do a fine mist. Shaking up. All right, so the, the perfect time to pull the tape, no one has the answer. I'll tell you why. Uh, temperature, right? Depends on temperature, depends on how long you took to mix the resin, depends on the temperature of the resin, right? Depends on how long the resin sat in a bucket. A lot of variables when, so we don't have an exact time, right? We wouldn't want to say, hey, pull it in this time and then it may be too early and most of it runs off. So. We came up with some cool ways to kind of test. And so you would just, I mean, obviously it's really thick right here, but if I fold this down, see how it's moving pretty quick. That tells me we could wait a little bit longer. But if I come over here, you probably want to be right here, James. Yep. So if I, if I pull this one, it's a little thinner over here. If I fold that down, see how, how slow it's moving, but it's still moving, right? And so we'll just probably check it another 10 minutes and go to, go to pull the tape. All right, so last thing we're gonna do before we head out is scrape the drips, right? It's always nice to not have to come back and sand all the drips off. And then obviously you can see if a homeowner is gonna be around if they wanna scrape the drips, right? Maybe over the next hour or so after you leave. Very simple process, putty knife. We like using something thin and, right? Something super thin. And then we just run this down that edge and that just shaves off all those drips. This will probably drip for another, I don't know, maybe hour or so. Real simple way to make it to where you don't have to come back and sand all the drips off the next day. All right, so that's it. We'll come back tomorrow, uh, go over applying the top coat. All right, so we're on day three, right? One day prep, right? And we're doing two different projects. We're doing the tile counters, the granite counters, right? Um, so yeah, we prepped it the first day. We did uh, plastic everything off. We did a coat of epoxy on everything the first day. Got a lot done the first day. Second day we came in, did the actual coating, right? The decorative part, this wood grain. And then today we're finishing it out. Um, and so what we're doing today, the process before sanding or, or before top coating, since we're doing the matte urethane, um, if you don't sand the surface with like 220 grit, sometimes you'll have little speckled dots um, where you can see gloss marks. Um, it's kind of cool. It almost looks like there's glitter in the countertop when you leave that. But if you don't want to see that, you either have to do two coats of urethane or just sand the surface to kind of dole it out and you will, you'll never see those little spots. And so we always like to just sand it real quick. Doesn't take long. Plus, you're also creating a smooth surface, getting rid of, rid of any defects, dust particles that fell in the epoxy, right? So that way when they run their hand across it, it feels perfectly smooth. So we always like to just scuff it up real quick. Again, we're using 220 palm sander hooked up to a vacuum. And then we hit the tops with the palm sander, hit the faces with the palm sander, and then we do the corners by hands. Alex is just going around, hitting the corners real quick, 220 grit. And then that, again, that creates a nice, smooth, zero imperfections, zero dust, zero debris in the surface. So we always recommend 
putting a urethane over epoxy is just gonna give you more longevity. It's gonna last longer. And again, it's more durable, more stain resistant. So we've sanded, wiped it down extremely well a few times. So I'll just go over mixing real quick. It's simple, it's fast. We have our countertop urethane kit here. Again, it's, it's our matte urethane, so it's gonna have a similar finish to what the countertops have now. So I'm gonna take a one quart container. I'm gonna add my A, I'm gonna add my B, and then we need to add two ounces of water to that. And what I like to do is add the water into the jug, shake them up, dump them back out. I'm gonna stir that by hand for a couple minutes, right? Scrape the side, scrape the bottom. Then we're gonna dump that into a roller tray. And then I have a 3 8 nap roller that I de-shedded. Always de-shed them, run them on some tape. That'll get any loose, loose hairs off. That, that way they don't get into the counter. But simple process. And then when I, when I install it, I'm gonna be doing sections at a time. So this isn't very wide, so I could coat this whole thing at once. And so if you do small manageable sections, you're always gonna have fresh clean product that's not tacking up on you, less chance of roller lines. But we probably, our matte urethane is probably the best matte urethane on the market because it lays out smooth and flat. And it creates that, that honed look that you have to sand and sand and sand to create. We can create that same exact look just a matter of minutes. <laughs> 